Now, what is a germ layer? What is body cavity? What is siloam? Now, as you can see over here, we have two more terms that is prostomia and digerostomia. Okay. In prostomia, if the embryonic blastopore, please pay attention to what I am saying. If the embryonic blastopore gives rise to mouth of the organism, that is known as prostomia. If the embryonic blastopore gives rise to anus, that is known as deuterostomia. Okay, these two terms you have to remember. Now, when we get introduced to these two terms, we have to come across different body plans which were simply understood in these terms. When we have to understand body plan, first thing is that we had a acellular organization. Okay unicellular sorry then we had cell aggregate organization that was in the case of sponges in the case of body plan we have this cellular organization then we have the blind sac body plan there are two three types one is cellular where there would be cell aggregate one is blind sac and other is tube within tube Now let's see what these two are and then we are going to understand about prostomia and deuterostomia when I said that if the embryonic blastopore gives rise to mouth and if the embryonic blastopore gives rise to anus. Now what is this about blind sac and tube within tube? Let us see. Uh, I'm going to clear this because this is not part of animalia. Just for understanding I made it clear to you. Animalia is multicellular organisms. Now what is about blind sac plan? This blind sac plan would be visible in radiata. First thing you have to know that these uh, radiators they have uh, radial symmetrical organisms which has two phylums inside it. They have blind sac plan. Blind sac plans means that there is only single opening for the body where the nutrition goes there is a single opening for a cavity that is known as gastrovascular cavity now this cavity is not to be confused by body cavity which we are going to study gastrovascular cavity is the cavity which is having a single opening from where the mouth, uh, food enters which could be termed as mouth and it could be termed as anus. The food would enter from that single opening and the food would escape out whatever the wastes are being uh, generated inside the vascular cavity. They would come out from that same single opening. So that is known as blind sac plan. Now this is not as advanced as the tube within tube plan. When we study the phylums, we are going to see these in uh, detail. But for now, what we have is in the tube within tube plan, there would be hypothetical organism I am making. Supposedly, this is the organism. This is the outer lining of the organism. There would be a mouth which is present and there would be an opening which would be known as anus. This mouth and anus would have a tube connecting through them. That means it is an opening of the tube known as elementary canal. So the organism is going to have elementary canal and that elementary canal will have two openings. This elementary canal is present right through the body in the center of the body and what whatever organs are to be present they would be present in these areas so this is the hypothetical representation of a bilateral bilaterally symmetrical organism that would have a elementary that would have an elementary canal with both the openings and that would be classified as tube within tube plan it will not be blind sac plan because in the case of blind sac plan supposedly this is an organism and this is the mouth that is known as hypostome in certain cases this would be the gastrovascular cavity and it would be something like this same opening that means whatever is coming inside would go out from the same opening this is the organism and the inner one lies the body cavity. So this is the blind sac plan while this is tube within tube plan. Now when we talk about tube within tube plan, we have 
prostomes and deuterostomes and you get to know that if the embryonic blastopore gives rise to the mouth first then it would be prostomes and in case of deuterostomes there would be the embryonic blastopore giving rise to the anus. In the prostomes we have schizocylomates and enterocylomates. Now a new term has come into the scene and what is silome, schizocylome, enterocylome, what happens to be silome? As I gave you a hypothetical organism that is this having an elementary canal that was a hypothetical bilaterally symmetrical organism consider it as a prostome and this would be the main body plan all right this is the organism supposedly this is the organism this would be the mouth this happens to be anus Okay, this is what is the simple structure of an organism that is a bilaterally symmetrical organism. This happens to the elementary canal. Over here, what do we have is we have mesodermal pouches. Not the mesodermal pouches. I can say that here lies a cavity inside which there would be the visceral organs which would be present. Talk about your heart, talk about your lungs and other organs. They are present inside a cavity known as siloam. That siloam is lining your gut. This elementary canal is known as gut. It lines your gut and inside these lies the visceral organs. Now the outermost layer of our body that is take, consider the example of the skin, we are also animals so I am giving our own example. The outermost layer is the, if we talk about our embryonic stages, those embryonic stages they have different germ layers and those germ layers are only responsible for giving rise to different uh, parts of our body or we can say different organs and the organ system. So we are going to consider it at the level of embryonic stage. At the embryonic stage outermost layer and the outermost uh, germ layer the which forms different outer organs is known as ectoderm. The innermost which lines the elementary canal because elementary canal is a hollow structure. So the inner one is known as endoderm. And in between, the layer which lies and surrounds the siloam is known as mesoderm. Okay, the layer between the ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm, uh, ectoderm and endoderm is known as mesoderm. And in between there lies the cavity which is known as siloam. So, we are going to see it from ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm's point of view. And we are going to get across the siloam as well. Now we were talking about a silom, we were talking about basically schizosilom and enterosilom and because we are talking about silom we find two more terms known as silomates, asilomates and pseudosilomates. We are going to see what those are. We are going to refer to asilomates and pseudosilomates. Now in case of asilomates, the body organization is so simple that there is outermost ectoderm if we are seeing an organism from the point of view of ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm there is an outermost ectoderm we are talking about a blind sac plan or a tube within tube plan we are considering tube within tube plan this is the gut the hollow cavity which is lined by endoderm and here lies parenchymatous mesoglia there is no mesoderm there is no siloam there is no mesoderm that means we have in terms of germ layer we have diploblastic and triploblastic organisms okay when we talk about diploblastic organisms there would be no mesoderm present instead there would be mesoglia which would be present between the ectoderm and endoderm the body will have mesoglia this is ecto this is endo and this could be mesoglia all right you might not refer it to mesoglia acylomates are those organisms which do not have the mesoderm talking about pseudosilomates as the name suggests there is a pseudosilom means false silom which is present inside the organism now let's consider again we have gut which is lined by endoderm outside the gut there is 
an ectoderm sorry uh, yeah an ectoderm that is the outermost lining inside the pseudocoelomates they are belonging to triploblastic category so this is diplo this is triplo and rest all are triplo what is triploblastic triploblastic is that all the three germ layers ecto meso and endo would be present and in diploblastic we have only ectoderm and endoderm which is present there is no mesoderm that is present in case of pseudocoelomates what we are going to find is there would be parenchymata cells over here there won't be any coelom there would be mesodermal pouches which are present inside a parenchymatous arrangement or the cells which does not form mesoderm in proper these are the mesodermal pouches subtended between the ecto and endoderm. So, this is what is known as pseudocoelomate arrangement. As you can see that we are finding the mesoderm, we are finding the ectoderm, we are finding the endoderm but what we are not finding over here is that we do not have any cavity as we discussed uh, sometime before that there happens to be a cavity around the um, these uh, endoderm and it is uh, surrounded by the mesoderm. So, over here the mesodermal pouches are having the mesoderm only but there is no cavity. So, this is about acylomates and then we have pseudocylomates. Talking about schizocylom and the enterocylom. Now, I need to tell you that entero means anything which is related to gut. I am going to represent it over here. We, when we talk about schizocylom, over here we will discuss schizo and over here it would be entero. Then we talk about schizocylom. What we have is that supposedly this is ectoderm. Here lies the endoderm. There is splitting of mesodermal pouches. There lies the splitting of mesodermal pouches. The splitting takes place in such a way so that there are two lateral pouches. So this is the mesoderm and inside lies the cavity. This is the mesoderm which is surrounding the coelom. They are true coelomates and there is coelom. And inside this coelom, the lateral pouches which are being formed, there would be visceral organs. In case of enterocelom, as I told you, entero word is derived from gut. The mesoderm or the coelom that is being formed, the mesoderm originates from the ectoderm. So, it would not be like this it would be something like this. The lateral pouches which are being formed, they would be originating from the gut itself. So, this is the main difference between schizocylomates and enterocylomates. The digerostomes which are formed, they are enterocylomates while the protostome, prostomes which are formed, they are entero uh, schizocylomates. Now, we come to the nutrition because animals cannot form their own food. They would be heterotrophic in their nutrition and uh, they will be parasitic. They could be parasitic. They are usually predators. They have to depend on some other food and that is ecological context that we need not to go. 